You can see that sign I need. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Today is a special day for me and Jim. Just leave it until I ask you for it, okay? Please. Um, you know why? Mm. Because I'm gonna have the um smudge right there. Oh. And I don't want you to accidentally knock it over, okay? Okay. All right. Anyway, it's Jim's <laughs> happy first day of the rest of his life. He is finished with chemo and radiation, and now he gets to relax and see in, in a month how, how they did. Um, so we are having a party, a celebration for Jim. It's the first day of the rest of his life. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, uh, me and Jim are gonna uh, are gonna share share his victory celebration with all of you because you guys have been in it for ever since I, we first got the um, diagnosis. Where's my feather again? Uh, so. Lift your foot up so I can lift your foot up real bad. Okay, now don't hurt yourself. Okay, now put it down. Okay, lift the other one. Just for a minute. You were just clean. I'm just putting all the... Uh-oh. See? Aliens are around. <laughs> I told you they were going to hear me trying to hide from them. Turn around. Let me do your back, okay, a little bit. You don't have to go that far. Talk we are see. Okay. Um I heard that there were aliens in the area. So this is the birthday hat I made so that um the aliens wouldn't know that we were celebrating because Somebody always comes to mess it up. Um, don't matter if they're aliens from next door or... <laughs> but anyway, I am going to... This is... This is Jim's birthday cake. <laughs> um, and I'm going to feed him. And I'm going to let you guys see and experience. Oh, Jim, um... We need a couple of those bottles um your solution in the box yeah yeah let me do it <sighs> sorry um we forgot to get the food <laughs> uh <clears throat> keep talking jim get in front of the camera and say hi jim Yes, honey, folks. And don't sound like you're tortured. <laughs> All of these people know you probably just almost as good as I do because I share everything with them about you. Yeah. Every time, boy, they put, and it says, easy open, box, easy open, box my ass. Holy smoke! Ah! <laughs> I'm 
Saint Paul Bunyan and his axe. Ah? Uh, Saint Paul Bunyan and his axe. Heck no. And it's easy open box. You know me. Let me in, Jimmy, please. Just a little bit more. You know me. If I set my mind to something, I'm going to get it. <laughs> now, <laughs> I had to pull on the lid really hard. <laughs> and um, every time I do something like that, when it finally goes, everything goes, goes flying with it. <laughs> but I got it, so. Anyway, this is um, Jim's basic meal, the stuff that they give him to. Oh, excuse me. The stuff they give him. And um, I usually give him, try to give him as close to two as I can. Um, okay. And with this, and with this jar right here, I put water because I give him a lot of water. Um, even though this time <laughs> I was using a lot of water to flush, to flush the tube, but <laughs> I don't know if my doctor is is all there. <laughs> she said to rinse his hose with Coca Cola. <laughs> Every time, when we're done, after we're done feeding, to rinse it with Coca-Cola. Come here, Jim. Okay. Don't be shy. I'm not gonna show anything. And if and if you don't want nobody to know who you are, you just go like this. No, wait, wait, wait. Just go like this and just look at everybody. Say, Ole, what the? <laughs> You're okay. Nobody's. I'm sure everybody has seen. You know, I gotta get rid of this hat. I don't care if anything is fine. It's not staying up. No, you have to take it off. Oh. That's why I brought this plant. Okay. Oh no, I don't like that. I gotta clean that up first. Just let it go. Let it go. Okay. Oh, Kim, you gotta get closer. My, my back will start hurting. I won't be able to finish. Here, come here. I don't remember I told you, watch the runners. Or watch the legs. Okay. Yeah. It's hot. We, me and him are just like night and day. Try to sit up, sit back. There you go. Now relax. Uh, we've done this a million times already, so you know what's going on. And they told me today to, I can't remember which side it has the, yeah, this side, <laughs> to wash it off with um, antibiotic, or what do you call it? Um, antibiotic soap. Well, the soap that, <laughs> I told, that's to make sure you're awake. <laughs> this stuff that is, that they use to, like when you're gonna have surgery, they give you the, um, they give you the soap that you have to use before, and it's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to sterilize everything. That's what we got to get. So, I got really, I got really panicked and upset about how much, it, fluid is coming out of this um this hole this wound uh, and you know I've never been around it so anytime I see any kind of medical procedure or surgery and that afterwards you see anything red and seeping out of everywhere so I I went into panic mode I thought, no, that's not a good place to get an infection. So, uh, <laughs> all the doctors at Virginia Mason, every one of them, and all the patient relations, uh, 
<laughs> and even the chairman of the board of directors, <laughs> when they were, you know, taking too long, you know, just treating them like shit. I wrote a letter to the um, to the board of directors, the chairman, and said that you guys are supposed to be a a world top world quality uh, cancer care all that stuff. and I said from what I've seen um, you guys need to change that rating because you're not living up to it and I explained why and the answers I got and who I talked to because I used to go straight down I went up the chain of command uh, they every one of them didn't believe that <laughs> I would go over their head, and when the doctor, everybody started just kind of blowing me off, I thought, okay, so I sent that email to the chairman of the board of directors of the whole Virginia Mason, and that's what I told him, because the first one we went to, we went, got, got there at 11, <laughs> And we were, they just now were hooking him up to the, um, to the chemo or to the poison at about five o'clock. And I didn't take that where I kept asking them what's going on. They said they can't help it because they're waiting for it to come up from the pharmacy. And I said, because this is like four hours later, man, I'm mad. I'm talk to the head of that department, the um, human relations uh, worker that was on, and I talked to her supervisor, and nobody really took me serious about how long they make them wait. You know, and they said, well, we're busy. So to make, here, do you want your dessert right now? No. Yeah, we'll give you dessert first. But anyway, to make cancer patients, and he's not the only one. You hear people sitting out in the, hall, in the lobby saying, uh, saying, we'll get to him pretty soon. And, and I told him that. I said, you guys, I don't see nothing top-notch here. I said, you make me sorry that I moved him from Swedish to here because I thought he'd get better care but. Now that I look, he got better care at Swedish. And I said, so I'm telling you, if I decide to move him back to Swedish, um, I'm going to alert the media. I mean, I will. I have no problem being heard, being loud, making people hear me. I don't care if they get mad. They hear me, they get mad, do whatever. I don't care. I'm going to do and say what I think. So anyway, <laughs> pretty much all of the um, <laughs> the institute at Virginia Mason where they do the chemo, every one of them, <laughs> you should see them all stop and start looking at me with, with evil eyes. <laughs> but I don't care, I just look at them, I feel like going, boo! <laughs> But you know, next time Jim went for his um, chemo, and that time he had to go three, three days a week for three weeks for that chemo, and he had a hard time. He, I know we almost lost him. He fell, had a really bad fall, so they lowered it and stuff, so he's more able to handle it. But um, for him to have to wait all those hours, or anybody. And they said, we can't help it, we're busy. I said, yes, you can help it. Get somebody in here that learns how to schedule. And I said, then you won't have everybody sitting out here waiting. And as far as that waiting for all those hours for the pharmacy downstairs to send up his solution, I told her, I said, that is I mean, that is way beneath what you guys are supposed to be. I said, um, that pharmacy down there, if it's that slow, you know, you need to, you need to do something else. And they said, why is there any pharmacy in here? 
They always had some kind of excuse, you know, but I ain't let them. <laughs> um, the patient relations uh, um, uh, workers there, they they switch on and they hear my voice and I don't have to say my name. They said, oh, hello, Josephine. Um, is there a problem? <laughs> they, Hell yeah, they're making my, then he was my fiance. They're making my fiance and me sit there all those hours because they didn't know how to schedule and you guys have an incompetent pharmacy. I, and they just kind of blew me off. So I went to the managers of, of that and the whole manager. And then finally, you know, everybody just kept blowing me off. So I wrote that letter to the... <laughs> Chairman of the board. Next time Jim went, um, I couldn't go because that damn chemo had, or not chemo, but um, uh, uh, vertigo had me flat on my back again. But um, the next time he went, when he got there, his solution was waiting in his room, and um, they hooked him up, and he was out of there in two and a half hours. You know? And I... I don't feel bad, you know, I always says, well, you all, you talk so mean to everybody. And I said, I don't care. They can get their feelings hurt or think I'm mean, but I'm going to get Jim the best care that I can. And if they can't do it, then I'll take him somewhere else that can. I did that when um, he was, he was, he couldn't eat for a long time. He lost 10 pounds and he was so thin and he could barely walk. And and they were gonna, they already decided to install the seating tube. But it was like two weeks away and he needed it now. And they said, well, they don't have any um, time openings. So I said, okay. And I start calling other uh, medical facilities. Like I called, um, <clears throat> University of Washington. I know Harvard is a part of that, but Harvard U. I mean, they're good, but they're they look at people if you're if you're dark, you know, automatically you're uh, and if you're Indian, you know, you're alcoholic. I mean, they are so hardened from having to deal with all these different people. Uh, that they're they're jaded to the to the human that's inside of each one of these people. You don't look at everybody and say, "Oh, that's a black guy." Oh, look, he's sagging. He's a criminal. Now everybody has. There's always been clothing fads. I tell you what, I'd rather see these these young men. Wearing the baggy pants and sagging, and you know their boxers sticking out the back. I've never seen any mud slides or anything on on them, you know, because they know it's showing. They do it in, with pride. It's just other people that are trying to put them down because you know because that's kind of become the the thing, the norm. <clears throat> Did I do one? I did them both, didn't I? Or there's a, oh, there's a little bit in there. So, they gotta stop that shit. I, leave it. I got it. What is, um... You know, everybody has a fad. I went into Chinatown, um, you know, international district here to go to, a, you know, a, a dentist. And these young Asian guys come in and they were skin, here now you can hold it. They were skin and bones, but they were wearing those skinny pants. Now that is a fad that needs to be outlawed. Or this one where these girls, these big fat girls, wear these low waisted um pants that their butt crack sticks up. Now that should be against the law. I mean there's everything. But it's just a matter of race. And that, that's what's holding this country back. 
<clears throat> but anyway, from here, Jim gets to recuperate. No more chemo, no more radiation. In one month, we find out how long they got him, how long they, they were able to get him. So I'm happy because this, um, both of them were really hard on him, the chemo and the radiation. He couldn't eat because it damaged some muscles in his throat. And there's other things too. But he was pretty lucky. He lost um, patches on his head and a few little patches on his beard. <laughs> that was good because I couldn't make a wig that would fit that beard. <laughs> you could wear. So, and he's going to get healthy now because I'm feeding him. And I do this um, as many times a day as I can. You want to use a coat? Yeah, I'm not done yet. I'm giving okay. you water. You need all this water. I know. I don't remember. Are you thirsty for Coke? No, I'm just... <laughs> just, want, just want me to hurry up with this water and everything and, and shoot you up with some Coca-Cola. Oh, man. You know that's against the law. Me shoot you up with Coke. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh, man. But, uh, um... I wonder if that coke going straight into his uh, stomach, I mean, it's not a lot, but enough to flush the tubes really good. I wonder if he'll get, like, um, uh, when you have too much caffeine, oh. uh, nervous and buzzed, or he'll start trying to buzz around the apartment here where I got to tie him down. <laughs> you better not, old man. I haven't had any. What? Caffeine in a while, so it might affect me a little bit. Yeah, and you know, this is so neat. Um, Jim, when I met him, that's all he drank was coffee. Never anything else, just coffee and smoke. And not just cigarettes. I gotta get this out somehow, Jim. Yeah, we need another Yeah, this, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna throw this out. Because I can't pull it up with right. the syringe. So I'll dump that in there and I'll pour. Pour you a good drink of Coca-Cola. Do you want me to throw some ice in there? No, thank you. <laughs> and I ain't going to put no rum in there, so. Did you ever drink rum? Yeah. That's what I used to like to drink until I got a hangover that... <laughs> was so bad I called detox on myself. Yeah, I used to drink ah. light rum. Mm -hmm. I, I liked Bacardi. And I liked tequila. I liked Jose Cuevo Especial. But, um, that's all the coke you get. That's tonight. all I need. I don't want you to OD. <laughs> okay, wait, I got it. I got it, dude. Okay, um, now is the trick that is going to be hard. It's, where's that antibiotic salve? Uh, it's, it's right there. I... Oh, <laughs> I hid it under there. Is put this on the wound without getting it all over. Yeah. So. They weren't very good at that. Huh? The nurses weren't very good at that. Uh, they, got well, it, they got it all over. Yeah, but you know what? I wasn't there because watch how I do it. No, 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 don't start. Push it over so I can put some. Ta da! It's gone. I mean, I it's on there and it's not everywhere unless you make it go everywhere. Okay. 
cool. Okay. Okay. Now let's take the... Um, if you start itching or anything at any time from this tape, you know, from taping this, this uh, tube down, you say something. Okay. Okay, you don't wait and say, well, it just, it just hurts a little bit. Okay. Okay, move that up. No, no, no. Trying to get out the scene. You know what? Them dang nurses, they already greased you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to wipe you down with some. You need better salve or better tape. Yeah, this medical tape is. Can you reach that alcohol? Well, you know what? Let's just um, do what I was gonna do. Okay. And, um,. Because when you start handling a lot and trying different things and all this stuff is when you end up not coming in contact with something that's going to hurt you. Okay. Okay, they said not to... not to put a dressing where the tube is coming out anymore. But, um... This tape doesn't stick, and it doesn't stay in place. Okay, fold it where it's supposed to. And not so much that it's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that uncomfortable? No. Oh, okay. Here, um, put your shirt up a little bit. Okay, now straighten your back, so... Okay. Jim is really allergic to... Um, tape or adhesive on his skin. So, when he had a really bad allergic reaction to when they installed the port, chemo port, that's where I moved him away from Swedish and I took care of him and healed it up. Stand up, please. Stand up, please. Don't run away from me, I'm just stand up. I'm trying to. I have to have space to stand. We have that. Oh, you got cotton mouse bad, huh? Yeah. We want, do you want to... Uh, okay, now don't... Hold that. <laughs> uh, you gotta watch me and Jim do things together. <clears throat> We're worse than... No, we're going to have to cover it down here, too, because it'll pop up these sides. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh. Okay. Does that hurt? No. Okay. If any time I do anything, you tell me right away if it hurt. Don't say, oh, it's okay, I'm tough. <laughs> Pain is your body's indicator that something is wrong. And pain is my indicator that you pissed me off. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, everybody, when they first meet me, I got that kind of squeaky mini mouse voice. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. Okay, if it starts to creep out, I bet you, you know what? It's going to start creeping out of there. Here. Let's, let's fix it before it happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'll give you a wedgie. <laughs> Should I give you a wedgie? Yeah, go Okay, leave that up here. Um, so anyway, that is the celebration meal of... Mm -hmm. Here, wait, I see your song. Oh, Jimmy boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountain. 
<laughs> okay. Are you okay? Did you get enough, Jim? Yeah. Okay. All right. You're done. I love you. And.